Hi, I'm Kim. You're watching Kim Wilson TV. My channel is dedicated to helping victims of narcissistic abuse get free and stay free. Between the comments here at our channel and at other channels and the emails that I receive, it's really clear that people are angry and frustrated. They want answers. They want to know what happened during this horrendous chapter of their life. And I want to talk about that today. Since we started the channel, we have explored all sorts of possibilities. And of course, the first and most obvious would have been the possibility that what we saw was a medical condition. Now, through my research and all the people I've talked to over the last 10 months, I'm going to say this one sits the least well with me. It seems absolutely inconceivable that someone could have a medical condition that allows them to skip away and everyone who's been in contact with them actually needs medical treatment. Uh, this side just don't buy it. And then, of course, there's that common thread, the similarity that they all share from continent to continent, from country to country, from language to language. Uh, the similarities are overwhelming uh, to the point that it really feels more supernatural than like a medical condition. Now, through our group attempts to research this, uh, I've really never seen, read, heard anything that fully substantiated the claim that this is a medical condition. Uh, truly, that is the theory that uh, I find the least likely. In my own personal experience, uh, victim and survivor of narcissistic abuse, I would say that what I experienced defied a medical condition. The changes, transformation, uh, shape-shifting almost. Uh, yeah, no, I, I would say that what I saw did not look like a medical condition. And of course, at one point, I did ask the uh, narc, if he thought there was a possibility that he was possessed by a demon, and he most certainly didn't deny it. In fact, he seemed to really be pondering that possibility. And I'm just going to say, if somebody asked me if I was possessed by a demon, I, I would say no. <laughs> You know, I think, I think most people would just say no, but when you really stopped and you really got to think about that for a minute, I'm just going to say there might be something to that. Now, that brings us to the possibility of demonic possession. Uh, the demon that comes up over and over again is, of course, Jezebel, the demon uh, most hated by God in biblical texts. Uh, this is a demon that is, uh, well, depicted as a female demon, but occupies both male and female human forms equally. Sexual vampire, um, misery-causing, chaos-causing demons straight from hell. Uh, the concept that these things could be all possessed by the Jezebel demonic spirit actually made a lot more sense to me because in my personal experience, I'd have to say that's what I believe I saw. What I believe in retrospect that I was looking at was some form of demonic possession versus a medical condition. Now, when I presented the question, and I've done it in several videos, and asked victims and survivors, what do you believe you saw? Do you believe you were looking at mental illness? Do you believe you were living with uh, and suffering in that horrible misery with someone with a mental illness? Or is there any possibility that you could have been living with a demon, uh, demon occupied empty meat suit? And I will say overwhelmingly, 99% of you said undeniably, demon absolutely demon so i think you know we have to trust our own instincts at this point trust in what we saw now of course through all the gaslighting there was quite a bit of confusion inflicted upon us but now in retrospect i'm 10 months out and i'll tell you i've got a lot more clarity and i'm still going to stick with the story that what i believed i saw was demonic possession
And, of course, to help substantiate the possibility that it was uh, the demon Jezebel that we all dealt with, I think uh, you need to consider the soul tie or that lingering feeling of a soul tie. I just can't get my head around the possibility that somebody's medical condition would inflict countless hundreds of thousands, millions of people with a soul tie. That just doesn't make sense to me. In addition to the possibility of a medical condition, the possibility of Jezebel, demonic possession, we have considered uh, synthetic humans, hybrid humans, reptilians, reptilian hybrids, clones, uh, all sorts of things. Now, I'm going to say that I have had the horrendous misfortune of knowing a woman for many years, a woman who is... Absolutely, undeniably, unquestionably a psychopath. A psychopath, I would say, on a very, very high level of uh, risk and danger. Someone that you could really equate with some of the top wackos, you know, that we're all familiar with. Um, and I'm going to say that this woman is probably the most frightening human form I have ever encountered. Uh, absolutely deranged and delusional in her thinking. Absolutely, uh, oh God, the grandiosity, it's, it's, it's something else. I will say it's hard to actually put into words the level of, oh God. But this woman is a self-proclaimed reptilian. Now, when I did some reach, uh, research on reptilian entities, and of course, David Icke is a wealth of reptilian information, I'd have to say that her account of herself being reptilian or reptilian hybrid did make sense based on the fact this woman displays absolutely zero signs of being human at all. I mean, in so much that she has not one single human quality, the reptilian theory that she herself presented was kind of believable. Now, being a full-blown psychopath, she may have felt that reptilian sounded cooler than demonic possession. But either way, of course, whether you're talking about reptilians, aliens, uh, synthetic humans, demons, we're talking about non-human entities. And I would have to say that uh, the narc in my life had absolutely shown a massive deficiency of human qualities. I think for those of us that really, really struggle to understand, I think part of the inability to understand lies at the foundation of what they are exactly. I think if we could really get some clarity as to what it is exactly that they are, we may be able to build a stronger foundation of understanding from that. I also recognize that we come from a vast array of ethnic backgrounds, uh, religious backgrounds, uh, cultural differences, age. I mean, all of those things are, are playing a factor, though we are all absolutely connected by this horrendous event that's occurred in our lives. We have differing backgrounds, differing economic situations, different educational backgrounds. But in the end, we've all shared this experience. So I think it is those similarities that keep us all tightly connected to each other. But I think it might be those differences, particularly cultural differences, that uh, cause us to perceive things differently. Uh, I believe that the information's there. I believe we have the answer. I think we just need to uh, brainstorm, pool our levels of understanding so we can come to a conclusion. And I believe once we understand what they are, once we understand what exactly we were dealing with, I think the road to total healing and freedom from it, and also um, the ability to ward it off and defend ourselves from it in the future will become much more apparent. 
please share your ideas, my friends. I'm Kim. You're watching Kim Wilson TV. I hope you guys are having a great NARC-free day.